Today is the Sunday program, so is there anybody who's here for the first time? I should probably ask that question. Yes, first time? Why is very soon? Okay. You've been to a temple before? Yes, but in India, not in India. In India? In India. Uh-huh. Okay. Which temple in India? Uh, mostly Rishikesh. Uh, Rishikesh. Okay. Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharani Nirvase Shashanyavari Pasta Chade Shatarani Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada Shri Dvaita Gadar Har Shri Vasudhi Gauravakarinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Last class I gave, not yesterday, gave a class, but it was an initiation class. It was in New Govardhan. New We were speaking from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. From chapter 17. And we were speaking about Lord Chaitanya's instructions that he had given on the verse in the Brihanaradi of Purana. Which is a verse everybody was familiar with. Harinam, 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 Eva Kevalam, Kalor, Nasteva, 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 Gatiran Yata. <coughs> Translated? No way, no way, what? No way I'm going to give this class. <laughs> no other way. There is no other way. Chant the holy name, chant the holy name. No other way for self-realization is in this age of Kali. There's no other way. And then we read some verses after that. Although we read them, we had to, because I spoke longer than I expected about the Kali Kaliya Nama Krishna Krishna Avatar, that other important verse that Lord Chaitanya instructed. So that was quite a dark for a popular text, or was there even a sort of text that could be read by Chaitanya or Pamukhi? So that verse is Kali Kali Nama Krishna Krishna Avatar Nama Hoy Te Hoy Sava Javet Nistura, which means in the age of Kali, Krishna very kindly appears in which form? Which is Kastira, form of his name. And what happens to anyone who associates with that avatar? They're liberated. Huh? They're liberated. He's Krishna. He's as good as associating with Krishna. Uh-huh. And what happens? By association with Krishna. Krishna. Liberated. Certainly he is delivered. Yes. Don't forget, this is Lord Chaitanya's instructions. <laughs> so he was speaking on these verses and then he started to speak upon it, about another very important per- verse. That uh, he himself quotes from his Shikshastaka. 
And although we quickly read through those verses at the end of the class, we didn't get a chance to speak about them. And uh, one of them, of course, is so important that Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur has designated it as the Siddha Pranali for Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Siddha Pranali means the means for Siddha, for perfection. Siddha Pranali reiškia būdą pasiekti Siddha arba tabuluma. And because it describes the characteristics and qualities a devotee should manifest in his service to Lord Chaitanya. Dėl to, kad tas posmas nusako, kokias savybės turėtų atsidavęs atskleisti tarnaudamas iš pačių Chaitanyje. And Lord Chaitanya himself, of course, also exemplified his qualities. Ir vieš pas Chaitanyje, nu, pats apreiškia šitas savybės. It's not that he just simply gave these instructions to others, but Lord Chaitanya came to teach by his example. Tai ne tik, kad jis tos posmas pamokė kitus, bet ir pats savo pavyzdžiui tai aparodyti. Because especially in the age of Kali, it's very, very difficult to follow if there's no good example. So Lord Chaitanya also taught this principle by his example. We quoted the verse, Yad Yadha Charati Sheshtas Tatari Vaitarodya Nasa Yat Pramanam Guru Te Lokas Taranu Vartate That whatever actions are performed by great men and common men will follow in their footsteps. And whatever standards they set by their exemplary acts, all the world pursues. So this was a lot of emphasis that the Lord made for teaching the ideal behavior, ideal quality of a Vaishnava by his own example. Because first and foremost he taught was how to be always absorbed in thought, thoughts of Krishna. And he came to teach that by absorbing himself in the mood of the highest devotee. As Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita, the best way to surrender to him is manmana bhava mad bhakto mad yaji man namas guru. This is the verse that Krishna quoted just before a saradhamam purita jamamai kam sharanam bhajan. Where Krishna says, Abandon all varieties of religion and just <coughs> surrender to me. Sometimes we hear this conception about surrender to Krishna and we really try to wrap our minds around it. How did, what does it mean to surrender to Krishna? Everybody has a different idea of how they're supposed to surrender to Krishna. But Krishna gave all the components of that surrender in this verse, manmana bhava mad bhakta mad yaji man namas kuzo. But Vyash Patsdavya visus komponentus šito atsidavimo prieš tai esančiam tekste, manmana bhava mad bhakta. Full surrender exists in those whose minds are always absorbed in thoughts of him. Vilnas atsidavimas apreiškiamas tų, kurie visą laiką savo protą sukoncentravė į jį. Which is, of course, difficult task. Even Krishna himself in his instructions to Arjuna gives various concessions in chapter, chapter 12. He tells Arjuna the ultimate surrender is just simply just always be absorbed in thoughts of him. But then he says right after that, the chitang samad naknasum, much at the chitang samad. Oh, Abhyasi, you mean the chitang mama jantam dananjaya? I forgot the verse at the chitang samad hatam nashik nosi maistiram. Yes. He says, if you can't fix your mind upon me, always in full surrender. 
Ir sako, jeigu tu negali, visą laiką sukoncentruoti savo protą pilnamą su dalimi. And he says, follow the regulative principles of Bhakti Yoga. Tai sak, reguliati vaisius Bhakti Yogos principais. In this way, cultivate a desire to come to me. Tokiu būdu kultivuok norą grįžti pas mane. Of course, we oftentimes explain, we were accustomed to thinking that when we hear the regulative principles, we think Krishna was telling Arjuna, no meat, no fish, no eggs, no intoxication. But that's not what Krishna was telling Arjuna. But not that Krishna Arjuna is saying. He's not telling him to follow these. These are the regulative principles of human life. He's telling him to follow the regulative principles of Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti yoga is regulatory principle. The regulatory principles of Bhakti yoga is to regulate one's life around one's thoughts of Krishna. We've heard Prabhupada say so many times that a devotee should mold his life in such a way that he can always remember Krishna. Or mold his life around Krishna. Just like some, sometimes when the artists, they make sculptures, they make an original sculpture and then they put a mold around it and completely around it so it takes the exact form of the sculpture. This is true, Divyashak, you make sculptures. Yes. <laughs> so, Prabhupada say, mold your life around Krishna. If you mold your life around Krishna, then Prabhupada uses the word, you become Krishnaized. Prabhupada sako, jeigu išliesta savo gyvenimą aplinkui Krishna, tapste kaip Krishnaized. Krishnaized, yeah. Krishna is. Krishna is. It doesn't mean you become Krishna. It means you become completely pure by total absorption in thoughts of Krishna. You become Krishnaized. Prabhupada uses the same principle on the example of putting an iron rod into fire. If you put iron rod into fire, it's by association with fire, it becomes just like fire. It's iron. Yes, it is. But Prabhupada says, touch it. If you don't think it's fire, just touch it. It's as good as fire. The more it associates with fire, it's as good as fire. So the more the mind associates with Krishna, it just becomes Krishnaized. <coughs> so manmala bhava mad bhakta mad yaji mam namaskaru. Surrender, real surrender for the devotee is to how to mold one's life around Krishna. Therefore, Krishna says, Atachitang samat, atum nasha kosi maistiram. If you can't fix your mind on me all the time, then follow these regulative principles of Bhakti Yoga. Todėl Krishna sako, bet jeigu negali visą laiką koncentruotis į mane, tai sek reguliatyvaisiais Bhakti Yogos principais. In this way, cultivate a desire to attain me. Tokiu būdu kultivuok norą ateiti pas mane. We often time to quote that verse from the can't remember where it's from. Smarta vyasa tatam vishnoi vismarta vyoda jatta chit sava vidi nisaitas yo eti yo eva kinkura. But Krishna must always be remembered. And Krishna should never be forgotten. These are the two principles that one has to follow. All the rules and all the prohibitions that are given in the scriptures are meant to serve these two principles. Yeah. We should always try to remember Krishna 
and be very conscientious not to forget it. However, our Vaishnava Acharyas have written a very nice, interesting commentary on this verse. And the, the verse that Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur explains. In this verse, there are two principles that need to be followed. Always remember Krishna. Don't forget Krishna. Now, if somebody is always remembering Krishna, why does somebody have to tell them, don't forget Krishna? It's redundant. Almost not necessary. If you just follow, always remember Krishna, that's, and you always remember Krishna. Don't forget Krishna. Why? <laughs> it's redundant. <clears throat> so, therefore, because don't forget Krishna is in this verse, the word satatam in this verse always has a different meaning. Because the verse is for people who can't always remember Krishna. Because if they could always remember Krishna, then there would be no need for the second part. Don't forget it. So therefore, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says that there's a different meaning for satatam, which generally means always. And the meaning which is intended by the use of the word is every day. Because we can't always remember Krishna. When Krishna says, follow the regulative principles of Bhakti Yoga, he is saying, every day, think of me. Which essentially means that everyone should have particular sadhana and which they do every day, which helps them to remember Krishna. There's a good reason for it. Because forgetting Krishna is so easy. And that's why it has to be said. <laughs> Don't forget Krishna. <laughs> this is so easy for those who are still conditioned and can't always think of Krishna. <laughs> so Krishna understands, even in his teachings to Arjuna, that always remembering him is not something that could be always so easily executed. And therefore he gives various stages of concessions that one can follow if he can't always remember Krishna. Next is follow the regular principles of Bhakti Yoga. If one can't do that, then he says, then work for me, offer the fruits of your work to me. If he can't do that, he says, just Offer sacrifice. Sacrifice something for a higher cause. These are various concessions that Krishna is giving. And if somebody follows, follows them in relationship with Krishna, then they'll be thinking, well, they remember Krishna. I'm following because I'm following because Krishna gave it. I should follow it. But the highest ideal is to always remember. Therefore, he concludes Bhagavad Gita in the 18th chapter by saying, Manmada Bhava Mad Bhakta, Just always think of me. Because if you always think of me, everything else is included. All sacrifices are included. All austerities are included. All charity is included. Everything is automatically included by just 
always being absorbed in the likes of Krishna. And he even explains that at the end of the eighth chapter. He glorifies the devotional service to be the most supreme, most superior form of worship of the Lord. So, <coughs> Lord Chaitanya taught by his example uh, how to be always absorbed in thoughts of Krishna. But he always gave, he also gave instructions. Chaitanya Charitamrita is predominantly Lord Chaitanya's instructions. There's pastimes there, there's Leela there, definitely. But Chaitanya Bhagavat is mostly Leela. But there's a lot of instructions given by Kaviraj Goswami and Chaitanya Charitamrita, which Lord Chaitanya gave to Rupa Goswami, to Sanatana Goswami. Right now we're discussing the instructions Lord Chaitanya gave on the verse from the Brihad Naradiya Purana. And he's also giving some instructions about how to always be able to chant the holy name of the Lord incessantly. This is, of course, another challenge. Kirtaniya Sadahari. Kirtaniya Sadahari. Lord Chaitanya says in his Shikshastika verse, Trinata Pisa Nichina, Dura Pisa Hishnana, Mani Namana Deva, Kirtaniya Sadahari. So I'm going to read some verses that Lord Chaitanya spoke in this Brihad Naradiya Purana. Lord Chaitanya spoke in this on this verse. Taigi, aš paskaitysiu porą tekstų, kurios Viešpas Čeitanija ištarė apie šį tekstą. And we'll speak a little bit about it. Ar mes truputį apie tai pašneikėsime? Do you have something in front of you? Čeitanija Čiar Čimita? I'm not going to speak too long. Can you repeat the verse, please? Chapter 7, Adi Lila, Chapter 17, Text 26. Okay. To chant the holy name, always, one should be humbler than the grass in the street and devoid of all desire for personal honor, but one should offer others all respectful obeisances. Jokio noro asmeniniai pagarbai ir turėtų išreikšti visą pagarbą kitiems. I'm not reading the Bengali, I'm just reading the translation. Neskaitau Bengali, neskaitau tik vertimą. Text 27. 27. A devotee engaged in chanting the holy name of the Lord should practice forbearance like that of a tree. Even if rebuked or chastised, he should not say anything to others to retaliate. Esu devęs, kuris užsijėmė šventą vardą kartuojimą, turėtų praktikuoti kantrybę, tokio kaip medžių, net jeigu kažkas jį sudrausmina ar vyksta ant jų, jis neturėtų nieko kito daryti, kad gintis. Tai yra sudėtinga. Labai sudėtinga. Many people struggle with this. Daugumai žmonių su to yra iš tik jau sunku. When they hear this ideal, they think, it's, it's high. Of course, Lord Chaitanya demonstrated it by his own humility. It was like, for instance, when there was criticism of him by Prakashananda Saraswati and the Mayavadi Sanyasis. Pavyzdžiui, kai Prakashananda Saraswati ir Mayavadi Sanyasis jį kritikavo, and Tapa Mishra and Chandrasekhar Chaya were so disturbed hearing how Lord Chaitanya was being criticized as a fanatic. 
ir ta pamiršo ir Čandro Šekačarija išgirdė apie tai buvo labai sunerimė, kai vieš pati čitame kritikavo kaip fanatikų. They were thinking, why is he acting like a sentimental, sentimentalist? He's a sanyasi. Tie sanyasi sako, kodėl jis elgiasi kaip sentimentalistas, jis juk sanyasis. He's like a sentimentalist, he's going out in the street and simply chanting these names like a sentimentalist, but actually he should be studying Vedanta with us. If he wants to be renounced. Jis kaip koks sentimentalistas, jis eina į gatvę, dainuoja šventus vardus. Kad jeigu jis nori būti atsišadėjęs, turėtų ateiti su mumis ir studijuoti vedantą. Then when Tapan Mishra heard this, they were so disturbed, they could not tolerate hearing such kūdžius. Ir kai Tapan Mishra išgirdo, tai jie buvo taip sunerimė, jie negalėjo pakesti tokio kūdžius. They didn't want Lord Chaitanya to go. Jie nenorėjo, kad vieš pas Chaitanya išėjtų. But Lord Chaitanya went. Bet kažpas šeitanė išėjo. Ir visi 60 tūkstančių Majavadžių sanyasių. Ir kai jis atėjo, kuris atsisėdo, tam, kur kiti plovė savo kojos. Jis didn't think himself fit to sit with them. He thought, maybe I'll wash my feet and I'll sit here. Jis nelaikė savęs lygių, kad sėdėti su jais. Jis pagalvojo, galbūt aš atsisėsiu tam, kur kiti plauna kojos. Imagin. He's teaching by example. He's mocking the humility. Sitting, sitting in an unclean place, and then Prakashananda Saraswati came over, and he said all these things to Lord Chaitanya. Sėdėti nešvarėjo vietoje, ir atėjo Prakashananda Saraswati ir pasakė visus tos dalykus vieš pačio Chaitanya. Of course, Lord Chaitanya tricked them a little bit. Aš žinau, man vieš pačio Chaitanya jos šiek tiek apgavo. He manifested in a fulgens, brilliant. More brilliant than millions of suns. <laughs> and because they're best only interested in the in this effulgence than what they saw, they said, Wow, he must be really spiritual person. <laughs> very expert. He knew how to attract the minds of others. But still He, he didn't uh, in any way. He didn't uh, put forward himself as as an elevated saintly person. But this thing is not status of asking because because the pajangu so serious. Oh, when Lord Chaitanya went to see Sarvabhama Bhattacharya. Arvaki vesh pas Chaitanya plangya Sarvabhama Bhattacharya. He glorified Sarvabhama. He was also Sarvabhama Bhattacharya was like a. He was known as the reservoir of all bad logic. Prabhupada Tačiarija buvo žinomas kaip visos prastos logikos tvinkinys. Ir vis tiek vieš pačiai tai išlovino. Because he had an impersonal conception of the Supreme. Mes arba Bama Tačiarija turėjo impersonalią vieš pačią supatimą. And even though he was so conversant in Vedas. Ir nors ir taip gerai mokėjo Vedas. He couldn't present the Vedas properly. Jis nemokėjo tinkamai jų pristatyti. Because whenever he would present, he would cloud the true meaning of the Vedas with his interpretation. Nes kai tik jas pristatydavo, jas jis pridengdavo tikrąją jų esmę, vedų esmę. Lord Chaitanya knew that. Vieš pat Chaitanya tai žinojo. He knew he was a reservoir of all bad life. Jis žinojo, kad jis visos prastos logikos tenkinys. Because he was a preacher. Bet kadangi jis buvo pamokslautojas. He was very respectful. Jis buvo labai pagarbus. You know, he says one should respect everyone. Jis sako, reikėtų gerbti visus. It's not just theory. Tai ne tik teorija. He was teaching how to respect He he respected Sarvabhama Bhattacharya. He glorified him. He smoked the Prika Girpa. He is Girpa Sarvabhama Bhattacharya. He is Lovino. He said, "You are most learned scholar." So, go to the house. He put the ears moxling and goes. And because you're such a learned scholar, I should submit myself totally to you for instruction. I think it's a toxic sense moxling as man reikia to postavet eite ir mokytis. I've come to hear from you. I should tell you, I should ask your wisdom. And he took the humble position, sat, sitting humbly before Sarvabhama Bhattacharya. And he was so humble that Sarvabhama Bhattacharya preached in personalism for seven consecutive days and he didn't say a word. And his humility was just Too much for Sarvabhama Bhattacharya. Jo nalongumas buvo per daug Sarvabhama Bhattacharya. He's trying to understand. I've been speaking to you. Vidanta, you asked to hear from me. I've been speaking to you consecutively 
I don't even know what you're thinking. Sako, tu man atsprašė pašnekėti, o tai šnekėjau tau septynias dienas ir tu man nieko nesakėjai, nežinau, kad ką galvoti. Sometimes we hear somebody say something, we mean jump down their throat. Kai mums, pavyzdžiui, kažkas kažką pasako, mes iškart norim jį ten šokti, kažką pasakyti atgal. We think, yes, I have to defeat him. Turi jį nugalėti. Sometimes we think that way, that I have to defeat him, but the only thing we do is we just turn the person away. Kartais galvojame, reikia jį veikti, bet ką kad padarom, tai tą žmogų supriešinom prie savę. Lord Chaitanya didn't jump down his throat. Iš pas Chaitanya nebandė jo peršokti. Of course, I'm not saying you should sit and listen to someone for seven days either. Žinoma, nesakau, kad reikėtų sėdėti ir klausyti kažkienos apkienos dienos. I doubt you'll find anybody who could speak for seven minutes. Visų pirma, nežinau, ar esat kas šnekės pastovė septynės minutės. And present a consistent impersonal philosophy. Ir pristatys nepreštarauojančią impersonalistinį būtų. But Sarabama Bhattacharya was such a scholar, he spoke for seven days. But Sarabama Bhattacharya buvo taip išsilavinęs, kad septynės dienas galėjo šnekėti. And finally asked him, ir galų galė paklausė vien patį šitą. Can you give some indication of what's going on in your mind? I've been speaking now continuously, you've said nothing. Kol galiu truputį paaiškinti, kas vyksta tavo galvoje, aš septynės dienas šnekuju ir tu nieko nesakai. Then Lord Chaitanya is Simply told them, I said, I, I've been listening to Vedanta, but I, I haven't been able to listen to your interpretations because you cloud the Vedanta with, with your interpretations. Vėš pas Šeitanė sako, iš mano Vedanta, bet negaliu klausyti tavo interpretacijų, nes tu Vedanto tarsi su klaidinai. The statements themselves are as brilliant as the sun. Patys steiginiai, jie šviečia kaip saulė. But coming from your mouth, they've been covered and I couldn't. Couldn't listen to your 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 interpretation, so therefore there's nothing I can say about what you told me. Of course, and then he explains. He explained in such a way that we can go into all the details of how Lord Chaitanya defeated Sarvabhava Bhattacharya, but he defeated him in such a way that he was respectful. Ir paaiškino tokiu būdu, žinoma, mes galėtume paaiškinti, kaip jis aiškino, bet jis paaiškino taip, pagarbiai paaiškino. Even when Lord Chaitanya defeated Keshava Kashmiri, he was so proud. Paaižiūrėjau, kai vieš pas Chaitanya nugalėjo Keshava Kashmiri, kuris buvo labai pasidžiai. He was known as the Digvijai. Jis buvo žinomas kaip Digvijai. It means that everywhere he would go, he was always victorious and defeating anyone he would have. And he was so proud of his ability to defeat others that as soon as he would defeat them, he would say, "Okay, put your name here. I defeated you. Show it." Tai jis taip didžiausia savo pergalėmis, kad kai tik nugalėdavo kažką sakydavo, jums pasirašyk į mano pralaimėjus į sąrašą. But he heard about young Nimai Pandit. Kad jis kai išgirdo apie jaunąjį Nimai Pandito. Then he was thinking that, yes, he wants to go, he wants to meet this person. If I defeat him, I'll get so many followers. O tai buvo, kai man reikia eiti nugalėti jį, o kai nugalėsiu, gausiu tiek daug pasakėjų. Because Nimai Pandito was known as the greatest scholar, and he did not have a dweep at the time. Nes Nimai Panditas buvo žinomas kaip geriausias, jis lavinės mokslininkas, ne vadiupojo to metu. But what Digvai Jai, Keshava Kashmirin, came before Lord Chaitanya. Kad įgudžiai, Kešlavo Kašmirė, tai apie šviešpatį Čeitaniją. And Lord Čeitanija said, please speak, let me hear what you can say about the, about whatever topic you'd like to speak about. Maybe you'd like to speak about the Ganges? Ir Viešpas Čeitanija sako, šnekėjok, prašau apie, bet kokią temą, kokią tik nori, gal nori apie Ganga kažką pasakyti. So, Kešlavo Kašmirė then composed spontaneously 100 verses in glorification of the Ganges. Ir tada Kešavo Kašmyris spontaniškai sukūrė šimtą pasmelių apie šlovindamas gangą. Just like the wind. Tai buvo tarsi vėjas plaukė. And Lord Chaitanya, young Nimai Pandit picked out one small defect in one of the verses. Jaunasis Nimai Panditas, vieš pas Chaitanya, rado mažą klaidelę vienam posme. And when he pointed it out, Kešavo Kašmyri was flustered. Ir kai jis jie nurodė, Kešavo Kašmyri buvo susigėdęs. And all of his students were surrounding him, but Chaitanya's students, they were surrounding him. Ir visi viešpatės Chaitanya's mokiniai ir jo mokiniai, juos buvo apsupę. Ir jis labai susigėdo. He started to laugh. 
pradėjo juoktis? Nu, čia, 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 If if the, if this person is defeated so soundly and, if, and insulted in, in front of all of you, he'll certainly give up his bloody. He was so respectful. And the way he did, he defeated, he had to, he had to defeat them. Defeat them. But he was very conscientious and respectful. This is taught by his example. We can think of so many examples. These are just a few. But we just read that what he was telling is that he said that that even if oh, one should offer others all respectful obeisances. This is not so easy to do our fathers were all respectful obeisance. But at least in our minds we should be respectful towards everyone. In fact, there is a verse in the Chaitanya Bhagavad. Two verses in this connection. This is Madhya Lila chapter 10. This short verses, you won't have them. Kahari na kari ninda, Krishna Krishna bali, Ajhaya Chaitanya se, Jini Pekahali. One who chants the name of Krishna without blaspheming anyone will easily conquer the unconquerable Lord Chaitanya. This is, this is, uh, this of course is Vrindavan Das Thakur. Vrindavan Das Thakur is the one who is the Shvanta Vyashpatas Varda, Kitu Nekritikodamas Lenguvai Pasiaks Vyashpati Chaitanya. One who chants the now repeat it, one who chants the names of Krishna without blaspheming anyone will easily conquer the unconquerable Lord Chaitanya. Although Lord Chaitanya is otherwise unconquerable, undefeated, he can be defeated by humility. And in the next verse he says, Nindhaya Nahika Labya Sava Shastrikaya Sabhara Samhana Bhagavad Dhamahaya. All the scriptures declare nothing is achieved through blasphemy. Bhagavad Dhamma teaches one to offer respects to others. And the Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakura short commentary. He says, it is not proper to criticize others in order to establish one's supremacy out of, all, out of false ego. And that's how Lord Chaitanya offered respects to everyone. There was no false ego there. No, sometimes we try to defeat others or criticize others because it, it lifts up our position. But Srila Bhakti Siddhanta says it's not proper to criticize others in order to establish one's supremacy out of false ego. Well, disrespecting others, an offender falls down from Bhagavad Dharma. This is a pretty strong statement. Lord Chaitanya's order is to, that one should learn how to offer respect to everyone. We have sometimes even have a difficult time how to respect the devotees. Although Rupa Goswami has given instructions how to offer respects to, to all different levels of devotees. In Upadesha, I forgot to my phone now. It's Tredas. <laughs> my God, brother, who I was talking about yesterday. I hope he forgives me. <laughs> Stop bringing. <laughs>
Kas toks skambėti? O, kitas pradėjau. Sorry, I gotta get back where I was before it, it switched when he... When he... Turiu sugrįžti, kur buvau kažtai. I shot him off. Atitrūk. Sako, aš įžiūrėjęs. O kas jūs sakai? Rūpogos Vami. Thank you. Let's wait. Rūpogos... Who said that? Did it appear? No. No. He said, there are three... According to one status, we should offer respect. Sako, pagal skirtingus atsidavus lygius reikėtų jos atitinkamai girbti. He said, one should mentally honor someone who is chanting Hare Krishna. It means that he's chanting Hare Krishna, she's chanting Hare Krishna. That's pretty exalted. I mean, even one's chanting Krishna's names, Krishna's ready to, you know, to free one from so many reactions from sinful life. But this person's chanting Hare Krishna regularly. Net kartai ištarus Krišnos vardo, Krišno pasiruošęs iš laisvinti iš tiek daug reakcijų. O čia žmogus kartuoja Hare Krišną pastovį. Such person can be considered a devotee, a Vaishnava. Tokiu žmogu galima laikyti atsidavusi Vaishnavu. But their behavior may not always be so ideal. Bet jų elgesys ne visą laiką to buvo labiau būtų. They may do certain things which cause one to be into question what level Vaishnava are they. Kartus jie pasielgia taip, kad kyla klausimas, kokią lygį atsidavęs jūs. So, Rupako Swami says, we mentally offer them respects from a distance. Ir sako, mintise, mes per atstumą tokį žmogų gerbėme. We don't get too close. Per daug neprieartėjame. We get too close. We don't reveal our mind and confidence and then get insulted. Neperiams vam minčių, neprisišaukiam kritikos. We just don't get too close. Tiesiog per daug neprieartėjame. But still, respect has to be there. So we mentally honor, honor them. And for one who's taken initiation, who's worshiping the deity, he's steadily worshiping the deity, so we offer our obeisances to them. Of course, we still may not get so close, we may offer our obeisances. But at least we show them respect by offering our obeisances. And for one who is fully absorbed in devotional service, and who is devoid of the propensity of criticizing others, Rupa Goswami has given that as a criteria of somebody who is very elevated. Rupa Goswami has given that as a criteria of somebody They can't criticize. Just like Haridas Pandit and Chaitanya Charitamrita, Kaviraj Goswami speaks about him. He was the Pujari who was worshipping the deity when Kaviraj Goswami came to take, take blessings from from the deity to, to begin writing Chaitanya Charitamrita. And, and about Haridas Pandit, it was said that he could not see a fault in anyone. He was called Adosha Darshi. Darshi means one who sees. And Adosha means no faults. He could not find faults in anyone. He found faults in himself, but in any, everyone else, he just could not find any faults. So he was highly qualified in the jewel who was the Pajari serving the deities, but he was a Dosha Darshi. There are other examples of great Vaishnava Chahars who were Dosha Darshi. They think themselves Dainya. They're very humble. They don't think themselves worthy to even point out faults in others. How can somebody like myself, who's filled with so many faults, point out faults in others? This is how they think. 
Kaip aš, kuris esu pilnas klaidų, galiu nurodyti kitiems jų klaidas? Jie taip galvoja. Therefore they don't point out faults. Dėl to jie nerodo kitų klaidų. Of course, Prabhupada says that sometimes the one is in the position of a spiritual master, he has to point out faults. Žinoma, Šilo Prabhupada sako, jeigu atsidavęs yra dvasinio mokytojo padėtyje, jis turi nurodyti klaidų. How can he instruct if he doesn't point out faults? Kaip jis gali mokyti, jeigu nenurodys klaidų? But he has to do it with love. Bet jis privalgi daryti su meilė. Pity, affection. Supriti, su prilankumu. Therefore, the devotee is always very eager to be corrected. Dėl to, atsidavęs visą laiką nori, kad jį pataisytų. Especially when he's corrected by somebody who has no envy. Ypač, kai jį taiso tas, kuris neturi jokio priešiškumo. Because somebody who has no envy, he can, that's his qualification to be able to think of the welfare of others. Nes tas, kuris neturi priešiškumo, yra kvalifikuotas galvoti apie kitų gerbų. Prahlad Maharaj says this in the fifth canto of the Bhagavata. Prahlad Maharaj tai sako, panuktoje, un hauk, kad jie yra. He said, may all living entities become pacified. Prahlad sako, tai būne visos gyvos būtybės nurimsta. And may they all become free from envy. Ir išsilaisvina nuo priešiškumo. Simply by always remembering Krishna. Vien visą laiką atsijungdami prieš. Because when persons become free from envy. Nes kai žmogus išsilaisvina iš priešiškumo. Only then can they think of others welfare. Tik tada jis gali galvoti apie kitų žmonių gerbūvį. So therefore, Pilad Maharaj is praying in this way. Dėl to, Prahlad Maharaj taip meldžiasi. Oh my Lord, Nishrigadev, may all living entities become pacified by practicing Bhakti Yoga. O vi aš pati nirsim Kadeva, tai būne visi nurimsta praktikuodami Bhakti Yoga. May they all become free from envy. Jeigu jie visi išsilaisme iš priešiškumą. So they can think of each other's welfare. Kad galėtų galvoti apie vienas kitą gerbą. Such a prayer. Kokia nustabi malda. Such a highly exalted prayer. Kokia labai išaukštis malda. So, certainly sometimes one needs to be corrected. Ir iš tikrųjų, kartas reikia būti sudrausmintą. But, To be corrected means that one should, one's heart should be free from envy, hatred. Bet kad drausminti, reikėtų, kad širdis būtų laisva nuo priešiškumo, nuo pavydų. Free from greed. Laisva nuo godumo. In fact, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, even he writes about that. Bhakti Vinod Thakur, aš apatai. Maybe I should finish the commentary before I start going to Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Galbūt reikėtų pavyk komentarą pasiūrėti. Bhakti Siddhartha says, while disrespect, disrespecting others, an offender falls down from Bhagavad Dhamma. Taigi, Bhakti Siddhartha sako, kad negerbdamas kitų, žmogus krenta iš Bhagavad Dharmas. The regulation for offering respects to everyone. Bet nurodimas gerbti visus. Including dogs. Ir pat ir šunis. Cows. Karvis. Asses. Asilus. And dog eaters. Ir šunų valgytojus. Ir šunų valgytojus. All living beings has been described by Sri Gaurasundra in his Amanina Madhadena verse. Uh, the regulation for offering respects to everyone has been described by Lord Chaitanya in his Amanina Madhadena verse. Buvo nurodytas viešpatė Šitanijos jo Amanina Madhadena tekstą. Which is Trinada piece. So, this is what uh, is stated in the Chaitanya Bhagavad about offering respects, learning how to offer respects to us everywhere. And one other thing, and I, I could probably speak on this quite long, I'm not going to speak long. Ilgai galėčiau pati išnekėti, bet ilgai nešnekėsiu, paliksiu laiko klausimams. Ir labai norėčiau, kad Dirašanta Maharaja mūsų nušviestų savo įvaizdus. Gal apie šią temą galėtume čia tiek pasakyti? Hello? I just thought I'd let you know I'm going to ask you. Tik norėjau, kad suprastumėt, kad jūsų paprašysiu. You're more qualified to speak on this than I am. Jūs labiau kvalifikuotas negu aš. You've given me these japa classes to the devotees all the time. Jūs mėko visą laiką sudavus, jūs kaip kartuoti japa. You sure certainly must be speaking about and exemplifying this topic. Jūs tikrai turbūt šneka apie šią temą. Be speaking so much about the holy name. Šnekėdamas tai rūgą apie šventą vadą. So... If you'll share something. I'm going to just read one more. I'll start again. I'll just get this.
Uh, oh, I read it already. A devotee engaged in chanting the holy name of the Lord should practice forbearance like that of a tree. Taigi, atsidavęs, kuris praktikuoja šventą vardą kartojimą, turėtų bandyti būti kantrus kaip medis, pakantus kaip medis. Even if rebuked or chastised, Bet jeigu jį atstumė ar sudrausmina, he should not say anything to others to retaliate. Sakyti, kad yeah, this is the one I said is really difficult. <laughs> the tendency is, why do you say that? Tendency yra sutikti ir sakyti, like kodėl sakai, aš netoks. And even if I am like that, what business do you have telling me? Ir net, jeigu yra sutoks, pats tavo reikalus. The mind immediately will find so many different things. Well, you like that too. <laughs> right? It goes like this. So many different things in mind. Well, what about him? What about her? Why me? And we deflected. Misplaced. Who are you to say anything? I'm not going to talk to you. I'm going to avoid you. But sometimes we can't wait that we move into that to that stage. Totally. Of course, and then we begin analyzing that person's just envious of me. <laughs> Even though they might hit the nail right on the head. Not <laughs> like that. person's just envious. Of me. <clears throat> and then we start thinking how to deal with envy. <laughs> Others envy. <laughs> Not my own. Not <laughs> others envy. And we oftentimes quote a verse <laughs> about forbearance because it's one of my favorite verses. The ladies have heard me quote it all the time. But it's very, very... Yes. I'm getting there. First, it's a very relevant verse. This verse was spoken by Shamakrishi. She text Pasaka Samakarishi. Shamakrishi uh, is the father of Shingi. Samakarishi is born Shringa Titus. And uh, for those of us who know, Shringi is the one who had uh, cursed. Parikshit Maharaj. To, buy, to die by the bite of a snake bird. Because he could not tolerate that Parikshit Maharaj had taken a snake and garlanded it around his father's neck when he was sitting in, in meditation. Of course, that was all the will of the Lord. The will of the Lord was is that he wanted Shrimad Bhagavatam to be spoken and he wanted Pariksha Maharaj to be the ideal hearer and Shukadeva Goswami to be the ideal speaker. But externally it appeared that Pariksha Maharaj was offending Shingi's father, Shamakrishi. But Ishwarishkui atrodo, kad Parikshita Maharajas ižeidžia Shringa tėtų Samakarishi. Because Parikshita Maharaj was wandering in the forest and he came to the hermitage of this Rishi. Nes Parikshita Maharajas keliavo per mišką ir aptiko šito Samakarišios gyvenvietę. And he was hungry and thirsty. Ir jis buvo išalkęs ir ištroškęs. But the Rishi was sitting there in deep meditation. O Rišis giliai meditavo ir sėdėjo. He wasn't conscious of the fact that Pariksha Maharaj had entered his hermitage. Jis nebuvo samoningas, kad Pariksha Maharajas atėjo. So Pariksha Maharaj thought he should teach him a lesson. Taigi Pariksha Maharajas pagalvojo, pamokys jį į pamokos. Because one should properly receive the guest when he appears. Tinkamai priimti svečią, kai jis ateina. Of course, it's the same thing Durvasa Muni did to Maharaj Ambarish. Žinoma, ta patį padarė ir Durvasa Munis Maharaj Ambarish. But it's a completely different story. Bet tai visiškai kitą istoriją. So Pariksha Maharaj took a dead snake and he growled it around his Samikrishis. Ir Pariksha Maharajas paėmė negyvą gyvatę ir uždėjo kaip girlianda ant Samikrišio kaklų. And when Shringi, his son, learned of this, 
Ir kai šitingi jo sūnus apatais sužinojo. He had the qualification to curse. Jis turėjo tą kvalifikaciją galę prakeikti. Because he was a qualified Brahmana. Nes jis buvo kvalifikuotas Brahmana. So he decided he would curse Pariksha Maharaj to die. Ir jis nusprendė, kad jis prakeiks Parikštą Maharadžą, kad jis mirtų. For having insulted his father. Todėl, kad jis žydė jo tėtį. When his father came back to consciousness and heard what his son had done, O kai tėvas grįžo į samonę ir išgirdo, ką padarė jo sunus, jis buvo toks sutrikęs. Kaip tu galėjai tai padaryti tokiam išaukštinam tyram vaišnavui, kaip parikštą Makaradžas? Jis toks išaukštintas šventas karadžas. Jis gina visus, jis nebuvo kaltas čia. Jis akseptė tai kompletai jau humilitį, kad Pariksha Maharaj had a good reason for putting a snake around his neck. Same karišiu su didžiuliu nalanku priėmė, kad turbūt buvo kažkokia rimta priežastis dėl ko Pariksta Maharajus uždėjo tą gyvatiją man kakui. Because he was humble also. Nes ir jis buvo nalankus. But he was so angry with his son Shringi. But his type was to speak on savo sunau Shringi. He said, what you have done, you have offended such a saintly king. You should be counter-cursed. Ką tu padarėjai, sako, tu įžeidi tokį šventą karalių, tada reikėtų patį prakeikti. Jeigu tik parikšėt Maharadžas, tada atgal prakeiktų. Tau tik tu tokia bausmė už tai, ką tu padarėjai. Bet tada jis akim ir ką pagalvojo ir pasakė šitą posmą. Tiraskrita vipalabda kšapta kšipta hata hapi. The devotees of the Lord are so forbearing that even if they cheated, cursed, insulted, neglected, disturbed, or even killed, they never inclined to avenge themselves. He said, I would like Pariksha Maharaj to come to Krishna, but the problem is he's such a great devotee that he'll never do it. Sako, aš norėčiau, kad Pariksta Maharajus tada atgal prakeiktų, bet jis toks atsidavęs, kad jis niekad taip nepadarytų. Because the devotees, the devotees don't have this propensity, they're so forbearing. Nes atsidavęs jie tokie pakantus, kad neturi tokią polinkę. That even if they cheat, they're rebuked, insulted, they're so forbearing. Net jeigu su jais nesažininkai pasielgiamą atstumę, Jie tokie pakantus. Jie pasiruošė visą tai pakesti, viešbitas tarnystėje. So, Šomi Kvišį was left with one thing only. O to samio, kad iš jų liko tik vienas dalykas. O Krišna, only you can take care of my son. O viešbitai Krišna, tik tu gali pasirūpinti mano su mane. You should give fit judgment to him for what he has done to this great saint. Tu turėtum tinkamu gynu teisti už tai, ką jis dabar padarė šitam. Palieku Krišnos rankomis, nes Parikšėt Maharadžas tikrai neparkeiks jo atgal. Tai yra pakantumas. Ir Lord Chaitanya says that one, that even if if rebuked or chastised, he should not say anything to others to retaliate. Ir sama, ir todėl sakoma, kad net jeigu yra prakeikiamas arba apgautas, nereikėtų nieko atgal daryti. For even if one cuts a tree, it never protests. Nes net jeigu medis nupjaunamas, jis niekat neprotestuoja. And even if it is drying up and dying, it does not ask anyone for water. Ir net jeigu džiūlo ir miršta, jis niekat nieko neprašo vandens. One should strictly follow the principle of always chanting the holy name. Reikėtų griežtai sekti nurodymu visą laiką ar toti šventą vardą. And should be satisfied with whatever he gets easily. Ir būtų patenkintų tuo, kas natūraliai ateinu. Such devotional behavior solidly maintains one's devotional service. This is how to have one's devotional service solidly maintained to practice. We may not think like this. That may not come naturally. We still have false egos. Mes vis dar turime netikrą ego. They're not completely gone. Mes nesam visiškai kaip. At least we should know what we need to practice. Bet bent jau reikėtų žinoti, ką reikėtų praktikuoti. It needs to be practiced. Reikia taip praktikuoti. Until it manifests naturally, at least we need to know 
how to do it properly. Tol, kol natūraliai apsirei iš pakantumas reikėtų žinoti, kaip elgtis. To offer respect to everyone. Visiems suteikti pagarbą. Keep our distance if necessary. Tiek kur reikia laikyti atstumą. Get closer with those with whom we have friendly relationships, with whom relationships, with whom we can reveal our mind and confidence. Suartėti su tais, su kuriais turim draugus, kažkur važinavo santykius, kuriems galima skleisti su anonimais. Confidentially. Kuriems, kuriu galim atvirauti ir autos. When I say these things, the body is bewildered, saying, how is it possible to have such relationships? Kartais girdžiu, kad atsidavęs su narėms, tarsi, o kaip galim tokius santykius turėti? But it is possible. Tai manoma. But we have to invest. Reikia tiesiog skirti laiko. If we want a relationship, we have to invest to have such a relationship. Jeigu norim tokią santyką, reikia skirti laiko, kad turėtume tokią santyką. Esa was telling somebody the other day. Ana dieną sakiau, kad tam žmogui. Who is also bewildered by this standard. Kuris irgi buvo sunerimęs dėl tokio standartų. That we should treat our equals as if they're superior kad lygius reikia laikyti tarsi viršesnius savo. We're offering all obeisances to them. Kad reikia vis laik lengtis jiems. We serve them. Tarnauti jiems. With love. Su meilė. Selflessly. Be samanaudiškumą. And then we invest in a relationship. Ir skirti laiko tokiam santykiui. And then you know you really have a friend. Ir tada iš tikrųjų turėsim draugą. Who won't exploit the service or affection. Kuris mūsų tarnystės ar kūrėsų prie lankumą neišnaudos. Who won't treat you as if they're superior, even though you treat them as the superior. Kuris nelaikys jūsų kaip žemesnio, nors jau laikot jau aukštesnio. They'll treat you as a friend. Jie laikys jūs draugu. And even if they treat you as a superior. Ir net jeigu laikys jūs inferior. If they are superior. Net jeigu jie yra aukštesni. Why not be treated as inferior? Kodėl neturėčiau būti laikomas žemesnio? Then something to learn from them. Reiks kažką pasimokyti iš jų tada. But if one's looking for friendly relationships. Bet jeigu ieškom draugiškus santykius, one actually has to invest in such friendly relationships. They don't come cheaply. Reikia skirti laiko tokiam santykiams, jie pigiai neateina. Because usually our criteria is, my friend is somebody who is always thinking of me. Nes mūsų kriterijus dažniausiai draugas tas, kuris apie mane galvoja. My friend is always somebody who is doing something for me. Draugas tas, kuris man kažką daro. And then we use that as a criteria, as a criteria. That's why I'll choose my friends. Ir naudojam tokį kriteriją, kad va taip rinksiu su draugus. I'll choose my friends as somebody who's always doing something for me. Kad rinksiu su tą, kuris visą laiką kažką man daro. It's a very selfish standard to choose friends. Labai savanaudiškas standartas draugų rinkimus. If you continue doing something for me, I'll be your friend. Jeigu toliau kažką dėl manęs darysi, būsiu tavo draugus. But we need to have a different standard if we want real friendship. Kad tiek iki tokio standarto, jeigu norim tikros draugystės. Real friendship comes when there's affection, pity, love. Tai kurią draugystę yra tada, kai būna prie lankumas, priti, meilė. And these types of friendly relationships are essential in a society of Vaishnavas. Ir tokie draugiškai santykiai yra būtini atsidavusio į bendruomenį. And therefore, if you want to solidly maintain our devotional service, ir jeigu norim tvirtai vaikyti savo atsidavimo tarnystę, we should really take Lord Chaitanya's instructions and his example to heart. Reikėtų iširdį, priimti visus viešpatas šitanės pamokymus ir pavyzdžiui. If we take it to heart, then we have hope. Jeigu priimsim jos iširdį, tada turime vilties. Then I'll be able to continue to chant Hare Krishna. Kad galėsiu tęsti kartuoti Hare Krishna. Because chanting Hare Krishna is the means for perfection. Nes kartuoti Hare Krishna yra to būdumo sakymo būdas. Kodėl? Nes tėva, nes tėva, nes tėva. Because there's no other way. Nes nėra kito kelio. This is also about Chaitanya's instruction. Tai taip pat viešpat iš Chaitanya's pamokė. No other way. Nėra kita kelio. No other way, no other way. Three times. Tris kartus. Nėra kita kelio, nėra kita kelio, nėra kita kelio. Hari nama, hari nama, hari nama, eva kiva. Hari nama, hari nama, hari nama, eva kiva. Thank you very much. Maharaj, could you please say a few words? Uh, just a couple of points from your class, Marge. Thank you so much. It was a wonderful class. In regards to 
you know, preaching to others. We've all had the experience of Christians Bible bashing. So we shouldn't bag of the Gita bash either. And just one incident that happened to me about a month ago in England. And I met a couple of Christians on the street. So to call for a Christian or that way. I didn't have any devotional clothes, so they didn't know I was a Hare Krishna. Naturally, also what's that was a rupee? I don't know. I got a shoe, Krishna Itas. And I think I even had a jockey hat on, so they couldn't see my sticker either. Ma, for the boss, I kept on right at the end of my sermon, she goes. So they were holding a placard, and I was, I came up, and so what does this mean? I turned around and stood up, and I said, "Yes, I will go there." And I didn't use it. It's the usual Christian message, of course. So they spoke a little bit, and I listened. So then I said, "Yeah, I'm from another religion, but I, I have a few questions I'd like to ask you." It confuses me a little bit that if we only have one life, then how come? Someone who is handicapped and you know unable to speak or see whatever. My net rig do koju sakot kad turim tik viena gyvenimą ir jeigu kažkas pavyzdžiui negali šnekėti arba yra neigalus. Is that very fair on God that He only gives one life? A tai labai sąžininga iš dievo pusės, kad jis duoja tik tais vieną gyvenimą. And I was going through different questions like this. All about heaven. Is there something even higher than heaven? Heaven is the only goal. Anyway, what I was doing was just actually preaching to them, but not in a way that I was actually preaching to them, but in the way that I was asking them, you know, what does your Bible mean by this? Ir iš tikrųjų, ką aš bandžiau padaryti, tai pamokslauti jiems, bet ne taip, kad tiesiogiai pamokslauti, o aš jų klausiu, ką aš tikrųjų reiškia jų Biblija. So then they would say something, and then I would say something, but we had a good time together. Ir jie man taip kažką atsakydavo, aš jiems kažką pasakydavo, ir taip smagiai praleidom laiko. And the way I finished it was, well, I actually have to go now, but it was really, really nice to speak with you. There's not many of us left in the world. Like like us, meaning that I wasn't trying to be better than them, but I I brought them that we were equal. You're religious, I'm religious. You're following religious practices, I'm following. Ir kaip užbaigiau, kai jau reikėjo eiti, sakau, na, buvo labai smagu pašnekėti, jau turėjo eiti. Ir mūsų iš ties nedaug liko pasaulyje tokių. Kai taip sakant, aš nesistengiau parodyti, kad jie žemesni ar kitokie, bet kad ir mes ir jie sakam religiją. And I think the whole point is that we've got to give our association gradually, bit by bit. If we trump it out, then we're told that we get to do it so we're going to have to trump it. You know, and this other point that you made, Maharaj, about Lord Chaitanya's his style of preaching. Er, Maharaj, you should make sure that the verse that is Chaitanya is from Oxlaya or Buddha. Where he came and sat in a very humble place. Kai jis atėjo ir atsisėdavo labai nuo lankę vietą. And he revealed the sulfulgens. Ir apreiškė savo švietėjimą. Kur jūs paaiškinat kaip milijonas saulė. And the fact that he was so humble that he was, you know, listening to them for quite some time. Ir kad jis buvo toks nuo lankos, kad jų klausėsi. Even they were criticizing him. Nors ir kritikavo jį. But he didn't take an offense. But he's not easy either. You know, instead he he took a very subordinate position. You are all very senior persons, and I have really no knowledge and no understanding. Yes, but he had no lankas na padete. Kad jūs visi tokie išaukštinti, o aš neturi jokių žinių, joka supratimo. This is how Prabhupada also approached his guru and and Krishna as he. Started his preaching in America. I have no devotion. I have no understanding. 
Um, so I'm taking shelter of you because I know that uh, if you so desire, you will make my preaching successful. Shila Prabhupā, kai pradėjo savo pamokslavimą, jis atėjo prieš Guru ir Krišną ir taip atsakė, aš neturėjau kai žinių, neturėjau kas kvalifikacijos ir tik jūsų malonė, jeigu jūs norėsite mano pamokslavimas, duos kažkokių vaisių. And as you said, at some point, they were so overwhelmed by his association. Ir jūs paaiškinat, kad kažkuriuo tai metu jų bandravimo dėka, jo bandravimo dėka jie buvo tokie sutrikę, they wanted him to speak. Kad norėjo, kad jis toliau kažką pasakytų. That was all he was waiting for. Jis <laughs> to laukia iš tikrųjų. Oh, you want me to... Oh, well, I will say a few words then, okay. <laughs> Aš porą žodžių pasakysiu, jeigu gal. And those few words, you know, he delivered them home for the six... Sixty thousand. Sixty thousand. Ir jūs patos... Ir jūs porą, porą tų žodžių pasakė visiems 60 tūkstančių sanjasių ir prakašinandai. So this is a kind of a nice um, instruction for us because we're nowhere near being very qualified first of all. Even, even I've been a devotee for 50 years but you know I'm nowhere near uh, being qualified as one should be qualified. Tai yra geras pamokymas mums, nes mes tikrai net nesam prie artėjo pro tos kvalifikacijos. Makaražas sako, net pats 50 metų praktikuoju, bet nesu prie artėjas pro tos tinkamos kvalifikacijos. Anything we have is all the mercy of Shilo Prabhupada or our Guru and Krishna. Ir ką mes tą turime, tai Šilos Prabhupadas Guru ir Krišnos malonė. So, to, in reflection on all this, we need to, before preaching, we need to be qualified preachers. Taigi, susumuojant, Prieš pamokslavant reikėtų būti kvalifikuotiems pamokslautojams. Now, get a little bit of effulgence before you speak. Reikyti šiek tiek švitėjimo prieš išnekant. My man Prabhupada was walking through New York City. Everyone knew, they didn't even know him, but they knew there was something different about him. Kai Šilo Prabhupada jie per New Yorką. Nekas jo nepažinojo, bet suprato, kažkas jo yra ypatingu. Yeah, and become humble. Ir tapkite nuo lankos. Not superficially, but genuinely humble. I understand the philosophy. These are the three ways in which he delivered them. Fulgence, humility, and philosophy. Thank you. Do you remember what time do you have to leave? 2.50. Huh? 2.50. Okay, I'll just stop here. So, stop here. Okay. Is that okay? Okay. And what's next? Just to know. Arti. Oh, okay. Um, dear Shantamara, I, I, I wanted to meet with Juvananda before he leaves. Would, would you kindly... Need the care time for RT. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he has to leave in 20 minutes. I want to be with him. Thank you very much. Thank you.